No one is more accurate at predicting events than Martin Armstrong. No one. And when someone like Martin Armstrong makes an urgent plea to the President of the United States in a personal letter to not sacrifice America's economy, you need to listen. Unfortunately, those in power will not listen, so we are doomed to watch as politicians destroy the world as we know it. Our leaders had a chance to be reasonable and make rational decisions. They fail to do so, so people will suffer and die. Remember that Great Depressions are followed by world wars and starvation. Welcome to the Shotcast. I'm John Little, recording on a warm Tainan evening on Friday, March 20th, 2020. Before going on, hit subscribe and click that bell to receive a notification when the next Shotcast happens. And if you like what you hear, hit that like button. All of that really helps get visibility for Megashock and the Shockcast. And if you didn't like it, well, you know what to do. Also, subscribe to the Shock Letter and receive my articles in your inbox at theshockletter.com. You can also find my posts on Facebook and Twitter. I have two books that you can read for free for now. They're called When Jacob Returns and Ezekiel's Fire. And believe it or not, there are ways to keep the shock letter from going to the spam folder by following certain easy instructions. Oh, and there's a curated list of important articles on this topic in the main article on omegashock.com. You can find links for all of that below. Now let's get back to today's topic. An urgent letter from Martin Armstrong, Brace for Impact. I first discovered Martin Armstrong in the mid-90s when I worked for a small investment house in downtown Jerusalem. His accuracy was phenomenal then, and it is phenomenal now. And up until a few weeks ago, Martin has been remarkably calm in his predictions. Composed and unruffled would be perfect words for how he has appeared when discussing the events that he predicts. But that has changed. Martin Armstrong is now visibly concerned about what is about to happen, and that should make all of us pay attention. And when you see him write a post titled, Asking for your help, forward this letter to whoever you may think will help, it's time to brace for impact. Also, that's a link to an article. Click click to read what it says directly, or just stay here. I'm about to read his letter to President Trump right now. March 19th, 2020. Dear Mr. President, As a financial analyst, advisor, and trader with a proven track record, I have been called in by former presidents, world leaders, and central banks around the world during crises since 1985. I was summoned for help during the 1987 crash. I was perhaps the first American analyst to be invited by the Central Bank of China and flew to Beijing during the 1997 Asian currency crisis. I have testified before the House Ways and Means Committee. Major political leaders have been guest speakers at our world economic conferences. Not merely Margaret Thatcher, but your friend Nigel Farage spoke at our Rome conference in May 2019. All of the economic stimulus packages will not save the day as long as the people have lost confidence in the future. There must be serious out-of-box solutions for the catastrophic economic chain damage, sorry, damage the health organizations and media have created. It is unimaginable. It is true that if we all stay home every day and just watch TV, we can beat the common cold. The damage these people have done when there are less than 200 deaths in America compared to over 1 million people who die in car accidents each year makes one wonder why we do not prohibit cars. Nearly 500,000 die of smoking each year. Why do we allow tobacco companies to continue operating? There are costs that must be weighed, and the losses these people have created by yelling fire in a theater is staggering. The damage that has been done by the CDC in sacrificing the entire economy for a virus, which is minimal compared to the flu, and has already peaked in China and South Korea, amounts to yelling fire in a crowded theater. They have undermined the world economy, and the amount of people who have lost jobs worldwide is staggering. 
Students and young voters work in restaurants as servers. They have lost their jobs by closing restaurants unnecessarily. They are excluded from the bankruptcy laws and are saddled with worthless degrees that do not guarantee jobs. Most students end up in professions that have nothing to do with their degrees. There is no degree to be president, a senator, congressman, or the head of a central bank. Student loans should be forgiven if they cannot find a job in which they have a degree. This will force reform in the education system to only offer worthwhile degrees. All student loan payments should also be suspended for the balance of the year. And here's the important paragraph. You should now look at imposing a nine-month moratorium on mortgage and small business loan payments and suspend all interest accrued during this period. There will be a risk of a flood of foreclosures unless we look realistically at the damage this has created. Negative interest rates only destroy the bond market as evidenced in Europe since 2014. The ECB cannot use Keynesian economics to lower rates to support demand when people have no confidence in the future. The economy must be supported, but not by handouts that the average person will not spend because they fear what tomorrow will bring. We must look at the small businesses and the average person. They account for 70% of the economy, not big business. All you need to look at is the excess reserves at the Federal Reserve. The banks will not lend money for they have no confidence in the future. The banks will only park the money at the Fed. There is no amount of money you can throw at the bankers that will ever reverse the economic decline. They will hoard their cash until they think the worst is over. Keynesian economics is to blame. You cannot lower interest rates and expect this will inspire people to borrow when they lack faith in tomorrow. All you do is undermine the pension funds and wipe out the elderly. This philosophy of just lowering interest rates has never worked even once. It has ignored the most critical factor, which is public confidence. People will pay 20% interest rates if they think they will double their money next year. They will not pay 1% if they do not see how even to make 1% next year. I am asking you to request Senate hearings on this crisis. You will find there are plenty of researchers around the world who are seriously questioning what has been taking place over this virus. The advice you have received from the CDC who seek authoritarian powers is focused only on their field without any understanding that the cure they suggest, shutting down the entire economy, will undermine the economy for years. You do not kill the patient to cure the disease. This sort of damage must be reversed and exposed, that they overreacted on false beliefs like the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Sincerely, Martin Armstrong. Notice his recommendation to President Trump that I highlighted. Quote, you should now look at imposing a nine-month moratorium on mortgage and small business loan payments and suspend all interest accrued during this period. There will be a risk of a flood of foreclosures unless we look realistically at the damage this has created. Negative interest rates only destroy the bond market as evidenced in Europe since 2014. The ECB cannot use Keynesian economics to lower rates to support demand when people have no confidence in the future. Close quote. Of all the recommendations that I have heard, this is the best one. But big business won't go for that. They want handouts. The banks won't go for that. They want their money, even though they are the biggest cause of our problems. It's time for a loan moratorium. Unfortunately, the greedy elites will not listen. And that means a catastrophic depression, followed by world war and starvation in vulnerable areas of the world, is coming. Do not forget that starvation will come as a result. It is estimated that millions starved to death or died of starvation-related diseases during the Great Depression of the 1930s, and I am disgusted that popular historians have worked hard to deny this. Again, you can find Martin Armstrong's letter in his post titled, Asking for Your Help, Forward This Letter to Whoever You May Think Will Help. Link is below. And here, and also I provide a link to the PDF version of his letter to President Trump. Please. Share this with as many people as you can. 
It's one thing for me to be concerned about what is about to happen. It is something far more significant to see someone like Martin Armstrong being visibly concerned. And then in his post after presenting his letter to the President of the United States, Martin goes on to say the following, quote, This is a letter I have sent to the White House, but others are sending it to the various heads of central banks. Please forward it to whoever you may think will help try to turn the tide. We must end this panic and return to some normalcy. As mentioned, this would also be the cure for the common cold. Home confinement. There are so many advisors claiming the numbers are false and many more people are dying without any supporting evidence. They always like to paint the worst possible picture on pure speculation. You do not do this with the world economy. Those that still cling to the quantity theory of money and claim this will be hyperinflationary, so by gold, well, you just saw what happened to Bridgewater. They never understand the interworking of the economy and the herd mentality of society. Hyperinflation has nothing to do with the quantity of money. They do not know their history and just repeat what others have said without ever verifying facts. In December 1922, the government of Germany imposed a forced loan, confiscating 10% of everyone's assets. They gave them bonds that were worthless. That is when the people lost confidence in the government and refused to accept their money as valid. It has always been a factor of confidence. We are endangering the world economy and this collapse is now already being argued that it proves that Bernie is right and capitalism is wrong. So if we do not turn the tide, your future will be lost forever. Close quote. I cannot stress enough how serious this is. Whatever you might feel about this virus, our current response to it will be the end of the world as we know it. Brace for impact. That's it for this shot cast. If you appreciated this video, hit like. Then hit subscribe and that little bell. Also, leave a comment. I look forward to seeing what you have to say about what was said here. Your input is truly welcome. You can also get my articles and updates in your inbox through The Shock Letter at theshockletter.com. And read my books for free, When Jacob Returns and Ezekiel's Fire. They just might save your life.